There's a number of different ways that you can go about collecting field survey data, but I'm going to show you just this one. First of all, because it's a free, freely available tool to be able to do this and you can use it on both iOS and Android systems. And also it's really easy. So if you go to, if you just Google EpiCollect5, you will come to this web interface. And what you're going to do is just head on over to login. Now, if you already have a Google account, you'll be able to sign in immediately. You don't have to set up anything different, but if you don't, you will need to sign up with a Google account. So I'm just gonna go ahead and log in now. Once you've logged into your Google account, you'll be able to go straight up to create project. Now, what it's gonna ask you to do first of all is to create a project name. Now, this, is, this needs to be unique. So I'm going to call mine Heron Island Survey. So you won't be able to call yours that, so you need to call it something different. And my description of this is it's going to be a coral reef survey. And I'm going to just call my, my form, I just call it survey. And I'm gonna keep it private at the moment. So if you're working on something that you want to get your students or other colleagues to input data into this as well, you can create a public project. And you can change this at any time as well, but I'm gonna make this private for the moment. I'll go ahead and create that. Now this just creates a uh, a shell basically if you like that I can now start to populate with various different questions that I'm then going to be using when I'm out in the field so one of the first things that generally you need to do is just to put into location so if you drag and drop location in there and basically all that's going to do when you then open this in your in your app on your mobile device is it's going to give you an option to update the location of, of where you are. So that's gonna add the X and Y coordinates for geotagging. So all you need to do is just type in the question for that. And I just like to call that location, nice and simple there. And tick that, and that's all well and good. So it's just saying that it's got a valid question, that's fine. Now you may also want to add in date and time information there as well. That's completely up to you. But all you need to do is to drag and drop those from the left hand side. Now you do have various tools here for your survey and you can use things like drop downs or radio boxes or check boxes as well or even add text in that event as well. What I'm going to do though, is I'm going to start first of all a group. So what this does is allow me to have a number of questions that all sit nested in amongst themselves. So here I'm going to use this to type habitat, for example, and edit the group. So within this, I'm going to start to have different types of questions. So in this, I can put in a drop down box, for example, and over here, I might say coral might be my first one. What is the habitat? So now I've refined and completed my form and here's what it looks like. It's super simple, but it's here just to give you an indication of a couple of different ways that you can set this up. So the first thing is I'm going to have my feature. So I've identified that either the feature that I want to collect is either some type of habitat or some type of infrastructure, something either coral or perhaps the bund wall or an anchor or something like that that I might see. Now here, I've done something a little bit tricky because I've made it that the answer is required. So it's going to be one of, one of either of those two options. And then I've also included what's called a jump. So now this means that, for example, if, if the person entering the data enters habitat, that's perfectly fine because that is the next one that you see in the list on the left-hand side. But if they enter infrastructure, then they skip habitat because they've come across an anchor, for example, and I'm calling that a piece of infrastructure rather than a habitat. So that's the first, the first thing that I've popped in there. Now what you'll see is that Habitat is actually a group. So there's a series of nested questions within that. But also if something is a Habitat, I don't want it to be a piece of infrastructure. So I've added another jump in there as well, which means that if they've selected Habitat, once they've answered the series of questions within that group, it's going to jump to the last question, which is the location. So it's not going to get them to enter information about infrastructure as well. So let's have a look at what we see within the habitat. 
and let's edit this group just to have a look at the questions that we have. So it's quite simply what is the habitat and the option to add a photo. So what is habitat? It has an answer that's required and they've got a range of different, uh, different options here in pull down boxes. So coral, sand, dead coral, etc. Then they also need to add a photo if they like. So you can exit editing there and then have a look at infrastructure. So infrastructure is really quite simple. All I've just left it as adding in a text box there so the person can add in exactly what that piece is because we don't know exactly what we're going to come across and also the option for a photo. Now infrastructure doesn't need a jump associated with it because the next step after infrastructure is location. So what I'd like you to do is you can now access this live. So if you go into EpiCollect or download the app onto your mobile device, and if you search for projects, you'll be able to find the Heron Island survey project. And I want you to have a look at it and be able to see exactly what it looks like from the mobile device view and, and how you can now see the back end and how that's structured. And so now it's over to you to go ahead and create your own field survey form that's going to work for you and whatever it is that your project is that you're trying to collect data for.